Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Attainable Goals. I'm Sean, and here is the next part of Aaron Ashley Goldman or Iridescent Scarabs interview. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you do. All right, let's get into it. So you said that you took about three years off from um, social media, and your content has definitely changed between like prior to that. Do you like your new content better? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm having. Like, you seem happier. Yeah. And I don't know, like you are an actor, so yeah. You, know, you could be acting. <laughs> but you, yeah, yeah. You really do seem like happier and like more you seem like you're having more fun. It is. So it's maybe you're just a better actress now or <laughs> you <laughs> hopefully. Um I think it resonates. I think this form of video content really changed everything for me because I love photography so much. I even took a photography course and I am everywhere I go. I'm always taking photos, but there's something about having the consistency of posting static images and photos. And even when I was documenting my depressive episodes, like it all just didn't feel sustainable and I didn't feel confident. But now I, I was really intimidated by the video content because I'm a millennial. It's very clearly like, you know, it's known to be like this Gen Z thing. Yeah. And I was like, how are they making these videos? Like I was watching them. And at one point I was like, well, my voice matters too. Like I'm hiding. I have so much to say. I, I redid my blog like five times with just making it all mental health instead of fashion because I'm like, I have things to say. Uh, you know, it's the pandemic. Like, I know people are feeling really scared. I know people are feeling really alone. Like, I want to be part of this, like, conversation. I want to be, you know, an outlet. I want to be a resource. I want to be someone people can look to to be like, I'm not alone. Yeah. And that's having, always a cause, good. having a cause and enjoying it. Like, it's just so fun to be silly. And some of these audios that pop up on the internet, like, I get to act. I get to dress up in fun fashion things. It just kind of feels like all of my passions align and I get to spread like a positive message. It's just like, that feels sustainable to me. That feels truthful to me. That feels authentic. Cause I know doing it for likes or clout or accolades, that's not something that's gonna be like long lasting or, you know, or just wanting to be liked. That's not gonna fill this void on the inside. And so I did need to take those three years and be like, what are we doing here, girl? Like, you know, we worked so hard. We built this up. We're, we're giving it up for three years. I didn't know I was going to come back to social media. I thought I was just going to go in a completely different career field, work in yeah. fashion, you know, pivot from property management. But the path just led me back to here in a more healthy way. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. That's good. Yeah. Do you still do like fashion stuff ever? Um, last summer, I actually interned, uh, I was an assistant to a costume designer and stylist, and I helped out with the shoot on interview magazine. So that was pretty cool. So I was dipping my toes in the fashion industry and thinking like, Oh, maybe I want this to be my full career. But I actually am so in love with tech and computers and phones and editing and photography and videography. I'm like, I can't give up that part of myself. Like I, I want to do my own thing. I want to. Yeah. You know, it also, gonna, it's also nice not having a boss. That's always good. I don't know if I could go back to that. It's yeah. so <laughs> it, it sucks. Yeah. I mean, I had a hard time with the corporate nine to five for sure. Like I yeah. was so unhappy. So was I. And then one day I was just like, I just quit. And then I came home and I was like, all right, I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do. And then I started doing uh there was like, I saw one thing and it was just like one of those stupid things. It's like, Oh, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life or something. And I was like, I don't like anything that will get me money. And I was like, I like dogs actually. And I was like, I guess I could try that. And then it took off and I was like, oh, cool. yeah, I love that. I love that so much. It's always, it's a nice story too. It makes a difference too. Like when you're doing something that you're passionate about or like accomplishing your dreams. Like I know that sounds so cheesy, but like when I wasn't doing that, I felt it. I felt it in like my soul and I felt it with my mental health. Like when you're going oh, yeah. something, when you're doing something you don't want to do because society says you should be, it wears on you. 
Yeah. I mean, that was like, that was how I was with depression. I was like, everyone feels this way. How do they do that? I just thought that I, you know, I was weak. Exactly. Like every, everyone else was doing it and they were just like, everyone else is miserable. Like, why can't you yeah. just figure it out? I'm just You're like, still fine. Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. is, is bad. But really then, know. yeah. Yeah. Never fun. Never fun. At but all. working for yourself is pretty great. Uh, there are some downsides. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. When the work dries up, that sucks because yes. then you're like, there's no one to blame it on. But right, exactly. Yeah. It's all you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. So you became an advocate mostly because of your own journey, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's good. Um, I really like all your videos. I like how, you know, you kind of, you basically just let people know that they're not alone, which is what I'm going for too. And it's, just, it's really nice. Cause I mean, you know, 20 years ago, I felt super alone exactly. and you know, you did too. I, I think so. Right. With Absolutely. your anxiety. And that was one of the, like the only positive things to come out of COVID in like my like people started kind of going like, man, maybe mental health is like, you know, a bigger deal than real. we've been. Yeah. Maybe it's like real. Maybe this is like really affecting people. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's so important. And thank you so much for, for talking to me about it because I think. Thank you for talking to me. I mean, you're of course. one. I could have been some weirdo. You, you took a <laughs> chance. That's another thing we learned from COVID. Men on the internet are really True. weird, especially when you put a camera in front of them. <laughs> This is true, yeah. but it is so important to talk about mental health because as you and I have both experienced loneliness, isolation, suffering in silence, all of these are very, very big, enormous problems. And a lot of the time it's because people feel scared about people not understanding, people calling them a victim, you know, there's all kinds of shit that people say yeah. and, and that isolates even more. And then that causes someone to not reach out anymore. And then that's when it gets dangerous. And yeah. so talking about it, making people feel less alone, not only helps us because we get to be part of a community, but it also helps people feel like, oh, they're, they're okay. They're doing it. And now they're helping other people. Like maybe I could do the same thing. Maybe yeah. it's better. Like maybe I can learn how to live with this and still have like a very joyous, satisfying life I don't have to yeah. be forever. Like there is help. There are resources. It's just a little confusing to find them sometimes, but yeah. it's nice to have people to look to for that. I yeah. Think. And expensive. That's the so expensive. And that's a huge problem. I mean, being poor is really expensive in it's America. A, uh, really it's, it's, it it shouldn't be, but it, it is. It sucks. It's, it sucks. Yeah. Um, we need, we need some reform. There's some big problems. It's getting yeah. better, but it can be better. It definitely is. Um, my big goal, like my big hope is that like someone like along the lines of, uh, I mean, back in the day, it was Elon Musk until he, you know, kind of went crazy. Um, but like Mark Cuban seems to be doing some good stuff. Like he like lowered the price of insulin and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it'd be, it'd be yeah. great to get like a billionaire who would just like, I don't know, make like affordable housing for free or something. Because, I mean, I got lucky in the sense that I, at the beginning of the pandemic, I had basically nothing because, you know, I didn't have any work. Um, there was no money coming in. But I was lucky enough that, like, my mom let me live with her. And, yeah, I mean, so I had somewhere to go and I had a roof over my head. And I, I literally just for like a year, I was just told, like, just get better. That's it. And I think that like a lot of people in the long run, that would really like, cause like now I'm making money and now I'm contributing to society and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I had that like year to like, I think that if like a lot of people, like, especially a lot of like homeless or like unhoused people, um, a lot of them just have like undiagnosed mental illnesses right. or they're just, they just need like a break. Yeah. And sometimes if you just give people like, like it doesn't even need to be like a fully furnished apartment, but like just like a roof and a bed, yeah. For like a year and just being like, hey, just worry about getting better. Yeah, heal. Like heal yourself. And mm -hmm. like eventually, like I think that a lot of people would just do a lot better. And like I think that the world would be a better place. I know it sounds like a 
crackhead pipe dream right now, but no, I I support it. And it's true. And it's like you and I were so blessed. We had this opportunity to kind of look inward and then reach out, you know, and get the resources that we need. And not everyone has that. And that is such an unfortunate thing in treating mental health is like, not everyone has the same opportunities. Uh, Yeah. It's really help when you're able to just kind of take that time for yourself. I mean, it is upsetting because like I know for a fact almost that like if like I didn't have a little sister who, you know, was like married and had like a home of her own or if, like my mom had passed away, like I would probably be like if I had nobody, like if I didn't have a support system, I would have been homeless during that time because yes. like I wasn't making money and I couldn't work because I was just basically like I just wanted to keel over and die, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I had no drive or anything. And I just got lucky. And I know that a lot of people like don't get that lucky. And yeah. that's what happens. Like, and it's a problematic up. system, you know, it's not you. And I think that's the problem. Yeah. We're being told that like work harder, do better. Yeah. Your mental health. <laughs> like yeah. you know what I mean? But I feel like the system is sometimes it's it feels like it's designed for us to fail a lot yeah. of the time. And, you know, that's why we can be like the change makers and, you know, try and make as much positive change. As possible. Yeah. And you're definitely doing that. And I appreciate it. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, you're doing it a lot better for longer. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a journey. You know what I mean? It's, you know, yeah. I, it all takes time. And I think that's like another thing that's like, especially with millennials. And I know that's my problem too. Like, instant gratification you kind of want it and like putting putting in the time it kind of sucks it's even i'm even that way with like the lottery sometimes like i won't buy a ticket because i'm like oh i have to wait until like saturday to get the thing no i'll just buy a scratcher whatever oh i lost okay the scratchers are fun (laughs) they are super fun fun. i i get how people get addicted to them i really do and how they get addicted to gambling i get that (laughs) thank god i never had that problem the only addictive personality trait I've ever had is uh, nerd stuff and uh, food. So other than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. I hate food's, r- food's rough because uh, like you need it. It's like the one thing that you can like be addicted to and you need. Um, so that sucks. <laughs> but yeah. It's not the best coping mechanism I have. It's not. It, it is not. <laughs> I know that for me it was like I was just so miserable all the time that like getting a cheeseburger gave me like dopamine for like 15 seconds. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Like, so every time. Yeah. Always feel better. Yeah. I mean, is it only for like five minutes? Yeah. Yeah. But like in a day that you feel like shit, like those five minutes, that's golden. Exactly. Five minutes more than, than you would get otherwise. So it's like, I'm going to take this opportunity if I'm having a horrible day. Yeah. And then plus eating healthy is just, it's great, but it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it does help though. Like I do. It, it definitely does help. I have noticed that you know eating <laughs> like, like healthy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I like I have noticed it, and then, but like there have been times when like, like I started seeing like a dietitian, and she was telling me like all these like things. She was like, "Well, you need to eat this amount of carrots and stuff, and blah blah blah." So I started like shredding carrots and like putting it in stuff. Yeah. And then like I told her that, and she was like, "Oh wow, you're doing great." Because it was like a month later we were talking, and she's like, "You're doing great." And she's like, "How do you like the carrots? Like these shred up?" And I was like, "Oh no, I hate them." And she was like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, no, I hate carrots, but um, you know, I mean, they're good for me, so I just kind of shred them up and throw them in there." And she's like, "You don't have to do that." Like you can do like other vegetables. And I was like, I feel like carrots is just easier though. Yeah, they are. They're pretty, they're pretty easy. Except they're easy and they're cheap. So, you know, yeah. they're good for the eyesight, right? I think so. Or that's like a myth because no. I don't know. When you break it in half, they kind of look like you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> dropped something, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's like a myth because like, if you cut it in half, they're like, oh, it looks like an eye on the inside, like a carrot. Because of like the round, but I don't know. I love food myths, like weird food myths. They're always fun. <laughs> yeah, but eating healthier, it just does feel. It definitely good. helps. 
mean. And then the one thing that I've noticed that it helps with and I really appreciate is that it um it makes when you cheat taste mm-hmm. better. Like, yeah. you know, like if you don't eat yes. like I mean, you don't eat meat ever, but if I don't eat red meat for like a month or two That's and then I have a cheeseburger, it tastes so much better. Yeah. Like it just like hits different. It's great. It does. It's my favorite thing <laughs> ever. <laughs> Eating is it is great. It's the best. So glad someone else could relate. I think everyone can relate to that. And yeah, it's not admitting it exactly. Yeah. I mean, if they if they can't, then like I'm sorry. Right. If you don't get any joy if like you just eat for nutritional value. Like, like it's like, look, I had I had one friend in high school who was like he was like super like in shape and like ripped and stuff, but like he would never eat anything like good. And I was like, he's like, yeah, man, but like I just want to, I just want to be ripped. And I was like, yeah, but like you're miserable. Like yeah. you hate all of the food that you eat. He's like, no, nah, I mean, like some of it's good. Like you know, I cheated the other day and I had like a couple strawberries, and I was like, what? That's cheating. Wow. And I was like, you mean like strawberry candy? And he was like, no, like strawberries, nature's candy. And I was like, oh my god. Whoa, that's a whole other universe. Yeah, that's like that takes so much discipline that I don't have. Yeah, I'm like, that is something else. (laughs) Is there anything else that you want to? Oh, yeah, before I forget, when you do your photography, do you use like film or do you use like digital? Oh, um, just my iPhone. I do have have a DSLR, um, Sony RX100 that I used to use for my YouTube videos and everything. But mm-hmm. nowadays I'm all just shooting on my iPhone 11. That's good. Yeah, it gets some really beautiful landscape pictures. Yeah, I mean, all the cameras are really nice and it's literally right there in your pocket. So it's just easy. Good. Is there anything else that you want to plug or <gasps> talk about? Yes, actually I am working on something. I don't know how much I can say about it, but it is in the fragrance industry Mm. and i do want to talk about that a little bit because i found that fragrance and smell is such a visceral experience that it does help me and my mental health a lot if i can smell essential oils and stuff lavender and like eucalyptus like all of those help me feel so much calmer but also just associating a scent with a fond memory can kind of take me out if i'm having a bad day mentally so I think that scent is very powerful. Well, it's um, the most, like, it's the scent that's, like, it's the one sense out of your five senses that is the most tied to your, like, memory yeah. cortex part. Yeah. So that's, like, you can smell something and, you know, be instantly, like, taken back to, like, something that happened, like, years ago. And it's, like, if I can be in my worst depressive episode and still put on, like, some perfume, like, that's everything to me. Like, that just makes my day just a little bit better because yeah, I'm- Yeah, it's like a small win. Exactly. It's just a, a little thing. And so I'm exploring that right now. That's the new thing I'm exploring is working with fragrance, you know. I don't want to, like, mess up your NDA or anything, but, like, are you just, like, creating a fragrance for yourself or- Yeah. That's cool. Is it going to have gold in it for your last name or? Like no, like that color gold? scheme is going to be, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's going to be very warm, I think. That's cool. Have you come up with names yet? I have a name for one of them. Yes. That's cool. Oh, you're doing multiple. Crossed. Hopefully it's a new thing, but it, it's been my dream to have like my own fragrance, fragrance line. So we'll see like weirder things have happened, you know? Yeah. That's kind of like a weird thing to tell. Like, how do you, I don't know how you would be supportive about that. Like, I would really like to smell your smell someday. It just sounds super creepy, but right. like you're being supportive, but like at the same time, you're like, mm. yeah. really like a serotonin boost from your yeah. chemical concoction. Yeah. I would like to smell you like what? Yeah. Like, no, but smell really does. It's like my, you know, it, it helps so much. Like you smell great, and you're just like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, that's me. You can buy it in a in a bottle. But, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anything else you're working on? 
that's it, you know, just fragrances just one day at a time, continuing content creation and, you know, spreading positivity. And yeah, you're doing a great job at that. I really like your videos. Um, keep yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You too. Oh, thank you. Uh, this will probably come out on Monday. Probably. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'll probably break it in half because shorter videos do better. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you again for doing this. Hopefully we can do it again someday. Yeah, thank you so much again for having me and for doing this for the mental health community. Like, this is what we need. Yeah, I think it's just, it's easier to hear people's like real stories than, yeah. you know, I mean, like you see like a bunch of like, the old, I guess the golden age influencers, as you like to say, they would come on and be like, I was depressed and this is what I did. I did yoga every day for a month. And it's like, it's not like real. Cause like you kind of look at it and you're like, I, I did that. And I then like, why? yeah. And I still feel like crap, but yeah. like, I, I remember I tried everything before like medication, and everything. I tried everything like yeah. working out, uh, changing your diet, not eating specific things because they were, you know, quote unquote toxic. And like all of it just turned out to be like, you know, bullshit in the grand scheme of things because I needed like actual help. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's. And then I, I liked the stories like on yours, you know, it's like you do, I think you did one video where, you know, your fight or flight one, that was good. Um, you also did another one about like depressive episodes where you just kind of like, you know, basically you shut down and it's nice to see those. So then people don't think that they're like completely broken and exactly. alone. Exactly. I'm trying to normalize that. Yeah. I never talked about it and I never showed that side of myself. Mm -hmm. when I went through it. So people yeah. be like, oh, okay, that's, that's a thing. I'm not this crazy freak who doesn't deserve yeah. love. Then yeah, it's not it's not like completely normalized in the sense that like you're telling people like this is how you should feel but right. it's normalized in the sense that it's okay to feel this way which is all that a lot of people need sometimes it's just like it's okay to be that way yeah like, like you're not broken you're just sick you know and you know you don't always need solutions you know depending on who you're venting to or reaching out to you don't always need this whole like program or action plan sometimes you just need someone to be like i understand that really sucks yeah it's always nice yeah i always have the problem of whenever people tell me a problem mm -hmm. i have to remind myself like not to try to fix it I do that yep yep it, there's one or the other you know there's yeah. no in there because like sometimes i'm just like like my friend will like call me and be like, Hey man, this is going on. This is going on. And I'll be like, you know what you gotta do? You gotta get a therapy. You gotta That's talk, talk to a, yeah. you gotta talk to a therapist. Uh, you're doing great. Um, don't worry oh, about this person. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, uh, yeah, I think I just kind of needed to vent to you. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> totally. All right. So I overshared and they're like, they're like, yeah, you overshared a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's like trauma dumping on people. Which, which is always is a very real thing. Yes, it's always fun too. It, just to, it, it, sometimes I do it just to like get like a vibe of somebody new that I meet. Yeah, how much uh, can they handle? <laughs> yeah, and like it's I know that it's unhealthy, but I find it funny, so it's kind of good for me, you know. Listen, I support using humor to cope. So yeah, that's, that's always that's always good. It is funny because like my sister and I have like always had like a dark sense of humor and so like my sister went and had to pick up my dad's ashes and sent me a selfie and was like hey me and dad are taking one last drive and then I'm cracking up but like her husband my brother-in-law is like next to me and he's like Jesus fucking Christ he's like terrified and I'm like I'm just like dying laughing and he's like oh my god what is wrong with you guys and I was like dude you gotta laugh about it or else you're gonna like start bawling your totally. eyes out Totally. Oh my God. That's wow. Hilarious, but so dark. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> do what you got to do. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. As long as you're not hurting anybody, do you. Exactly. I think the world would be a better place if uh, everyone just lived by that. Um, You're doing a good job living by that, you know? Aw, yeah. Just wanted to throw that last compliment in there. Um, keep up the good work. Thank you and so much. Thank you so much for doing this. I had a really fun time. Hope we yeah. can do it again someday. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for watching Small Obtainable Goals. Hopefully this helped you in some way or another, or it can you know help somebody that you know. If you're having trouble, call 988 
that's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, and they'll you know hook you up with somebody who can help you in your local area. That's all free, so you know take advantage of it. And um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, or don't. Whatever makes you happy. I'm Sean. This is my sister, Kirsten. I'm Kirsten. Yeah. Oh. You've ruined it. All right. Thanks, everybody. And cut.